Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Monday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, guess where my Bible's open to? You got it. It's back to the book of Leviticus chapter 23 today. Leviticus chapter 23. If at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and turn there with me, please. I'm going to read the opening four verses in a moment. Also get something on which you can take some notes. Well, as you're hearing this, I am just got done preaching actually in three of the churches that are pastored by men that are on the board of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Perhaps it's wise for you to know that, yes, Mark Smith is the director, but Mark Smith is a man under authority. There is a board of directors. they are godly men, pastors and laymen, and I'm accountable to them, and they're going to make sure that things are done decently and in order, and that's always a biblical principle that we want to apply here. But what a delight to be trusted to step into their pulpits. Well, if your Bible is open to Leviticus chapter 23, in a minute I'm going to read I've got a gospel tract I want to tell you about, but more. I want to read you a poem in just a moment here. There's a great old poem about people and church, and I'm sure you've heard the poem probably a number of times. The poem goes like this. It says, to live above with saints I love, oh, that will be glory, but to live below with the saints I already know, (laughs) Now, that's a different story. Now, we chuckle at that, but we also secretly agree with that poem. The poem simply expresses a real and a human truth. All of us, this side of heaven, have some relationships with people that are easy and some relationships that are hard that we have with other people and, frankly, other people have with us. Even at our local churches, there can be folk who, with whom you and I struggle to really, well, to really like and feel at ease around. This problem has caused some honest believers to stay away from church meetings. They say that they can be just as godly before God without going to church. Well, friend, if that's you, then you'd better be really glad that you're a New Testament believer rather than an Old Testament one. The Old Testament saints were commanded to meet together. Wait wait a minute, though. So aren't New Testament believers, aren't they? Ouch! (laughs) There may be just some lessons for you and I in this New Testament era to be learned from this Old Testament list of worship days found in Leviticus chapter 23. Get your Bible and join me there, please. Well, I've got a gospel tract in front of me. I'm mentioning this one because very soon the 4th of July will be coming along. This tract is entitled Freedom, Proclaim Liberty. Freedom. Proclaim Liberty. On the very front of this gospel tract is our Liberty Bell, and uh, it is a beautifully done gospel tract, and it opens with some of the verses here that's found on our Liberty Bell, which says this, Proclaim Liberty unto the land, unto all the inhabitants thereof. Well, You and I are grateful for the liberty we have in our country as citizens, but this track goes from that kind of liberty to spiritual liberty, liberty from a guilty conscience, liberty from the fear of death, liberty from coming judgment, and liberty from enslaving power of sin day by day in our lives. There is freedom to proclaim through the person and the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary cross in the empty tomb. Oh, friend, here's a great, great gospel track. It'll lay the gospel out clearly. Proclaim liberty. Would you let me send it to you, please? At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you 
three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Do that. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, including this one, Proclaim Liberty. And by the way, this would be a great track for your local church to put in their bulletin uh, come near to July the 4th. Oh, friend, 80 years Listen to that number. 80 years we have been producing gospel tracts and giving them away free of charge all over the world. God's been faithful to us, but he's been doing that through faithful people who love the gospel. Consider helping us in this work, would you please? Well, if your Bible's open to Leviticus 23, verse 1 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And uh, we have to stop there. Carrying on from that is the listing of the seven different worship times and holy days that are part of the Jewish calendar here. Now, my friend, uh, just by way of uh, pulling things together here, let me remind you that I have divided the book of Leviticus up into two large sections. Section one is chapters one to 15 that I called attaining fellowship through worship. Obviously, fellowship with God, attaining fellowship. The second part of Leviticus is chapters 16 to 27. That part I've entitled maintaining fellowship through practice maintaining fellowship through practice. Now, these two sections actually can be kind of collapsed into one New Testament verse, I think. That verse is 1 John 1, 7. The verse says, if we walk in the light as he, that is God, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us or is cleansing us as a present ongoing condition, cleanses us from all sin. Now, obviously, As we come here to chapter 23, we're in the second half, the second major part of Leviticus, the part I called maintaining fellowship through practice. But this section, chapters 16 to 27, I've also divided into two subparts. Chapters 16 to 22, I call that our walk with God. And then chapters 23 to the last chapter, chapter 27, I call our worship of God. Now, there's a lot more to the outline, and I've given part of the outline. I do that as we go along. But I wanted you to remember this key truth as we come to chapter 23. The key truth is this, to maintain an in-fellowship relationship with God. Remember, an in-fellowship relationship or to maintain a close companionship with God, you and I must walk with him in a life pattern which he says is right, and we must worship him in a worship pattern which he says is right. That's how we maintain a close fellowship with God. We cannot put ourselves into a relationship with God. That's a work of grace, but we maintain a close fellowship through our practice and our worship. Now, chapter 23 of Leviticus is all about this list of holy days, holy festival times, which the Jewish people were to maintain. Beginning Wednesday, I'm going to begin to talk about the actual days themselves, days like the Day of Atonement, the Passover, First Fruits, and so on. But today, I just want to take note of some descriptions that God uses to talk about these special times. These descriptions come out of verses 2 and 3. Description number one is this. They are called feasts. They're called feast times. Now, some of these special holy days did have times of solemnness in them, but as a general rule, these are joyous times. People are coming together. They're sharing food together. The word I would call for this description of being called feasts, I call them celebration times. There's celebration times. 
A second description here is that they are called the Lord's Feast. The Lord's Feast. Again, at the end of verse 2, they're called my feast, God says. Now, God established them. He designed them. And while it's true that the people certainly enjoyed them or were blessed through them, these feast times were first and foremost about pleasing God and honoring God. Imagine that. Worship times which were, well, God was made the focal point. They were God-friendly rather than seeker-friendly. I'm going to leave that subject alone right there. Description number one, I called celebration. Description number two, I called sacred. They are sacred times. They belong to God. The third description is these worship days were called holy days. They were set apart days. They belonged to God. They were for God. That's just a simple, simple statement. They were for God. They were set apart by God. They were holy, set apart days. Description number four is this. They're called convocations convocations. Now, that's simply a King James word for the fact that they are assembly times. So far, I've talked about celebration times, sacred times, set-apart times. Description number four, they are assembly times. It was meant here that God's people were to come together for the purpose of united worship. This was God's explicitly stated goal in these times, united corporate worship worship, assembly times. I've got one more here, description, and it's this surrender times. Some of these holy days were to be total non-working days, total non-working days. The chapter opens with the regular Sabbath days, but it's going to go on to talk about some other non-working days. The people were to surrender their rights to do their own activities so they could focus on God and on a particular fact of God or feature of God's character. This is especially true when you get to that day of atonement in the end of the chapter, near the end of the chapter, in verse 28. We're going to see there that no work was to be done on the day of atonement. But then in verse 29, follows by saying that every Jewish person was to afflict or humble their soul on atonement day. But then verse 30 gets even more explicit. It says if somebody did actual work on atonement day, they were to be killed. They were to be destroyed. Now, we all know that we do not have the same worship pattern and ceremonies today as the people did in the Old Testament. But in our freedom from Old Testament law, have we lost our sense of the role of our worship days and the role they're supposed to have in our lives? Have we forgotten who our worship days are for? Is there any place in our New Testament worship services for afflicting our souls? Has God told us to not miss the times of corporate worship? I think he has. There is a day in the New Testament called the Lord's Day. Do we view it as actually being his day? Do we give him sacred priority on his day? Have we become so free in our freedom that we have no sacred times to give back to God? God help us. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.